Thank you, Nick. It's uh, so lovely to be with you all. Uh, this is actually the first time that we've, we've been in church as gathered like this uh, since lockdown, and it is beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful to see each other face to face, to worship together? You know, it, it's have fellowship together. You, you can't beat it. Online doesn't matter. Sorry for all those watching online, if you're watching online. Um, but this is something special, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? The beautiful church of God uh, together. Uh, thank you, uh, young people, for uh, reading uh, the word so well to us today. Um, and uh, uh, when Nick told me I've got 20 minutes, I said, well, can someone else read that great big long passage then? Because uh, that gives me another five minutes. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it's just a great story, isn't it? A, a wonderful story of, of, of the church, the early church being birthed into action and uh, um, hopefully there will be uh, uh, something come up behind me on the PowerPoint which will give you the bullet points of what I'm doing here uh, today and it will be bullet points um, because we're going to whiz through this story um, but it's a great story and it's a great pattern for us. I want to I show you a pattern here that we can use and be part of as we go about the Lord's work. Uh, I, I'm entitled to the fruitfulness of the gospel, and I want us to know that the gospel is fruitful. You, you, you may have maybe a different experience. Oh, David, I share the gospel, and, and I don't see anyone that turns to believe. But I want to give us a new faith level, a new expectation, a new mindset that when we go and share the gospel, people will turn and believe. We're coming into a new season. I, I really believe as we come out of lockdown, people are going to be open. They are going to want to know more about what is the real meaning of life. We, we've been through this season and, and, and I, I, I seem to have readjusted my values, readjusted my thinking. Can you help me to find out what the real meaning of life? And this is a great uh, pattern here. First of all, we see... Peter and John, it says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple. There was a going. Okay, I, I want to say to you that we are called to go. We don't live in a monastery. We don't live tucked away somewhere. We are called to go. Now, there are some people that are called to go physically to another community, another nation. You've got Tom and Chloe have gone to Tottenham, literally up sticks and moved and gone somewhere else. As part of our little community of churches, we've got a, a couple that have gone to Malaga in Spain. They've literally moved their family and they're now residents in Spain. They've been there three years. And the only reason they've gone there is not for the sun, although it's beautiful, not for the beach, it's lovely. But they've gone there because God told them to go. And, and so it might be for you that God is saying, Go. Up sticks, move. He might be saying that. But for most of us, the going is everyday life. Well, as soon as we walk out our front door, we're going. I, I live, we live um, just a hundred yards really from my grandparents went to primary school. And my great grandparents moved into the area, uh, which is just a half a mile down the road. So literally, uh, I haven't gone anywhere geographically. Literally. But every time I go out the front door, I'm, I'm going into a broken world. I'm going into a, a people that need to hear about Jesus. And, and I want us to understand that, that they were going about their daily, uh, there were three o'clock in the afternoon, they were going to pray, normal sort of day routine, going to church, going to worship God. You know, you've come here this morning, tomorrow morning you'll be going into the workplace, you'll be going into colleges and schools and, and places like that. We are going. We are going. I want to say, let's go for purpose. Now, Jesus didn't save us just to hang around and wait till we go to heaven. And just after a nice time when we come here. He has saved us for an adventure. Do you know that life with Jesus is an adventure? Young people, life with Jesus is an adventure. He says, I've come to bring you the fullness of life. If, if you're not walking with Jesus, then you haven't got the fullness of life. And that includes going going out to see what God is doing. And the, 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 the passage that Jesus said to his disciples, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he says, go, go and make 
disciples of all nations. Okay, that's what we're about. This is the core missionary task, is to go. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you to the end of the age. This is what God is saying to us. We are the sent ones. As part of relational mission, you belong to uh, an apostolic family of churches. And because we're an apostolic family, we're apostolic churches. And because we're apostolic churches, we're on mission together. We are going. We are going into the world. And that's all that Peter and John were doing. They were on their daily business. But you notice something else here. When there was the opportunity, they stopped. You know, we can go into the world, but we're so busy getting from A to B, doing this and that, that when an opportunity comes, we're, we're not listening to what the Spirit's saying. We're so busy with our lives that we don't stop. I want to encourage us to stop. Take time. When you go out, so when you go out and say, Lord, is there somebody today that you have got for me to meet, a God appointment that, that are waiting for me to bless them, to encourage them, to share the gospel with? Is there somebody? And Lord, as I go about my way, I'm going to be listening to you and looking for that opportunity, and I don't want to be obedient and stop and spend time with that person. And that might need a little bit of adjustment to your calendar, your diary appointments. It might mean just, just giving a little bit more time to walk instead of getting the car. It might mean uh, when you're in the shopping uh, uh, supermarket that you, you don't go through the, shelf, the self-checkouts, but you go to the till, and you talk to the, the, the person behind the till. Things like that, just to slow down. Just to slow down. Peter and John, they stopped and they, they looked at this crippled man and then they says, I've got nothing to offer really. I've got nothing to give you. And, and I want us to come back to this. I preached last week on, on the Beatitudes. Uh, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And, and, and the first two Beatitudes, blessed are those who are poor in the spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, I want to say, we've got nothing. We are poor in spirit. We are bankrupt if you like. We've got nothing to offer anybody. Now, you might have a little bit of silver and gold. You might have a little bit that you might be able to give. If you found someone, let's, let's take a homeless person on the street. What would you want to do for that homeless person? You want to feed them. You make sure they've got food. You want to make sure they might have some shelter. Can I help you with some shelter? You know, is there anything I can do for you? But, and, and we should do that. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. But everything that you do there is nothing compared to Jesus. You see, if we only offer them food and shelter, but don't offer them Jesus, then we've offered them nothing at all. They say, silver and gold, I, I've got none of that. But what I have, I can give you. You see, um, when King David, who was a very rich king, uh, and uh, he was trying to put aside resources for the temple. In 1 Chronicles 29, he said, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to do anything willingly? For all things come from you, and from your own we have given you. We sang earlier, uh, who alone can save themselves? Who alone can heal themselves? No one can. We've got nothing. You've got nothing. And we live in a world where that is totally countercultural because it's all about self help, self worth, self, even we take selfies. It's all about me. But actually, guys, it's not about me, it's about Him. It's about Him. We've got nothing to offer. But what we offer, this is what we do offer we can pray with people. Now, Jesus sent out these disciples, Luke chapter 10 and, and, and other Gospels, go and heal the sick. That's what he told them to do. And, and Peter and John were following the instructions of Jesus. No, I, I, I haven't got any money, but actually Jesus told us to heal you. And so I'm going to heal you. And they prayed. And in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You see, I want to encourage us to pray with people. I, I, I found this early offer of prayer opens up conversations. So tomorrow morning, where will you be tomorrow? Just think, where am I going to be tomorrow morning? Workplace, school gate, in the community, supermarket, wherever you are, just think now. 
How are you going to engage with people? How are you going to connect with people? You're going to say, how are you? Aren't you? That's what you're going to say. Do you say that? How are you? It's not hard, really. And they will say, okay, da, da, da. Or you could say, did you have a good weekend? And what you're listening for is little snippets that come out of this. Yeah, it was okay, but my, my back was killing me. Ah, okay. Or, I, I'm a follower of Jesus. Do you mind if I pray with you? So that might be healed. Or actually, yes, I just, um, um, all my family have got pinged and they've all got to isolate. Oh, can I pray with you that they will keep well? You see, prayer is, is what we've been called to do. We have got something to offer. We've got nothing to offer other than Jesus. So we can pray with people. And Jesus sent us out to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and to be a blessing to people. So I want to encourage us to get to prayer. Can I pray for you? And if they say yes, they're going to be very surprised if you then start praying with them immediately. Because they expect you to go away and do it in, in person. Now, immediately, okay, let's pray. And straight in there, and you start to pray with them. I, I just want to encourage us in this. We've got, Jesus has given us something special, guys. He's given us a personal relationship with the King of Kings. We've got direct access to the throne of grace. I've, I'm, I've been at the same dentist now for many, many years. Uh, for, yeah, 20 years maybe since we've been on Chafford. And, uh, and uh, I was in for a bi-monthly check, bi-yearly checkup, six months, and uh, I said to the dentist, how are you doing, Dave? How are you doing? He says, I'm okay, but my daughter is not well. She's got cancer. And so I said, can I pray for you? And of course, I'm not supposed to be there to pray. I'm supposed to be with my mouth open. And, and I hadn't got my mouth open at the time in, in the chair, so I was able to talk. So he said, yes, please. And, and we stood, and, and he called his assistant, can you come and pray? So we stood there, and he said, can we hold hands? He said, of course we can. So we held hands. And, said, and I prayed a very simple prayer for his daughter, in the name of Jesus, be healed, sort of thing. Very simple, and uh, amen, sort of thing. And, and, we, and the tears were running down his face. You know, just tears. I, I want to say, we've got something that we can offer people here. Because we are in tune. I, I don't know about you, but uh, if you're, you know, I know you're, you know, it might rain so. Can you send one upstairs for, to him upstairs sort of thing? You know, they, they joke around like that. But actually, we can. We can. And I can pray for you. I can pray for you. I went back six months later, and he, he says, my daughter's miraculously healed. Uh, cancer's gone. And we prayed again. And it was just wonderful. You know, a prayer opens. I've done it on the doorsteps. You got knock at the door. Can I pray for you? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm just praying a normal prayer that you would think any any Christian could pray. And you see the tears running down their face. Why? Because we are connected with the living God. And as we pray, we bring heaven down, blessing them with peace, blessing them with the presence of God. Early off for a prayer. Let, let's make sure we get to prayer. Uh, quickly, that's, uh, that's the, the third point there. And then, of course, they hung on to uh, Peter and John and, and they started actually to think, wow, look at these guys, aren't they great? You know, look what they've done. And Peter says, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. It's not about me. It's not about me. Well, he said that we've got nothing to bring, we've got nothing to offer. It's all about him. And they, they want to give all the glory to God and they start to go through uh, the God of Abraham and they end up in verse 16 saying it's this God, it's by his name, it's by faith in him that this man has been healed. You see we want to give all the glory to God, all the glory to God, don't uh, you know we, we don't want anything that we can boast in because it's all about him, it's all about him. Paul said I planted, Apollos watered but it's God that brings the growth. It's God that does it. We're about God's business here. This is, this is not, this is, we're part of the family business, but it's his business. Okay? It's a spirit business. The Holy Spirit is at work. We need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be led by the Spirit and then allow the Spirit to do his work. It's about him. All the glory, all the honour is his and then, of course, we see... Are you still with me, everybody? Yeah? I'm going quick. 
Then we see that, that having healed uh, this, this cripple uh, and seen him praising God and, and, and the crowds were gathering and, and they get to the gospel. Okay, this is great. We, we could love miracles. We love miracles, don't we? We love to see people healed, set free. We love that. But if you don't get to the gospel, then you're not serving them well. And they get to the gospel and they talk about Jesus. Uh, uh, this is Jesus who has done this. And he says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And times of refreshing will come to the Lord. I want to encourage us to get to the gospel quickly. Go back to our, our, our man on the street, the homeless man. We might feed him, we might even give him shelter for the night. But if we don't give him Jesus, we haven't served him well. We haven't loved him as we should have loved him. It's the good news of Jesus that is important. This is what we are about. We're about Jesus and we're about bringing Jesus to people. Let's get to the gospel quickly. Now, in different situations, in different circumstances, that will mean different things. We often go out onto the doors, onto the streets. If you've not got to the gospel within a minute, then you move on. So you've got 60 seconds, and if you're not in the gospel, two minutes maybe, then you say, okay, and off you go. Now, you wouldn't want to do that with someone in your family. It's a different situation, or one of your work colleagues. But what I want to encourage us to is to get to the gospel quickly in whatever relationship you have. They should know that you're a follower of Jesus, and you should be sharing the gospel as soon as you get opportunity. That's what we're about. Jesus says, go and make disciples. The only way we're going to make disciples is we talk about Jesus. We share the gospel. Now, for those that were with my, my training the other day, I think I've, I've brought it with me here. Here we go. We did the, the, what we call the 411. And um, this is actual from the evening, so this is the one I did then. Um, and we said, why should we share our, our faith? We did that. And then we should uh, people map who we're going to share our faith with. And then we said, what are we going to say? And if you're going to get to the gospel quickly, you've got to know what to say. Now you might have a way of sharing the gospel. Please, if it's fruitful and, and you're seeing disciples be made, bless you, carry on doing what you're doing. But if you haven't, you say, I wonder what that is, then here's a way, we call it three circles. And who was on the training? Put, just put your hand up if you're on the 411 training. Okay, people have been a bit shy here. I, come on, because you know what I'm going to say, don't you? You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> come on put your hand up and be honest who was on the 411 training okay there you go so you can speak to any one of those and they will show you how to share the gospel okay and then we've, when, we, when we're going to do it we need to be able to share the gospel you need to have confidence in it Paul said I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes this is what we're about guys this is, this is it. Everything else, secondary. The mission of God, primary, first. Your decisions about where you live, who you marry, what school you go to, what job you have, you know, where, which way you're going to walk is about the gospel. It's about the kingdom. It's about Jesus. And I believe he's going to open up so many opportunities for us as we go into the world. But of course, as we continue this story, they had opposition. The priests and captains uh, of the temple guard, they arrested them and put them into custody till the next day. Uh, guys, don't be alarmed if you get some opposition. Okay? When I, I'm, I've, I'm a, uh, born in the country, um, been, been in the same place all my life, um, sharing the gospel on the streets, I've never been stoned. No, never. No. I've never been put in prison. It might happen soon, but at the moment, not yet. I've never had anyone hit me or even push me. I've had a, actually never had anyone been aggressive to me. You know, the worst possible response I have for sharing the gospel is, I'm sorry, not for me. Now, we were in a very polite country. <laughs> a very polite country. I want to say, we're not going to face the opposition that they... But there are brothers and sisters in other countries 
that are persecuted for their faith. They will face persecution, and yet they share the gospel relentlessly. <laughs> we have no opposition, really, and yet we're so timid. So timid. I want to encourage you, when you go, you will go, and you will share the gospel, you pray with people, share the gospel, you will have three, four responses, let's say. Acts chapter 17 gives us these responses. First of all, Acts 17 verse 32 says, some of them sneered. Have you got that when you share the gospel? People laugh at you. you know, if you're in school and college, people, I remember I was bullied at college because I was Christian. They laughed at me relentlessly. Terrible, you know? And you get things like, oh, if you believe in Jesus, you'd believe in fairies as well, you know, and, and, and unicorns. You know, they ridicule you. You're going to get that, okay? But expect it. But don't worry about it. Jesus faced it. The apostles faced it, and it's not that bad, is it? Someone laughs at you. So they sneered, and then it says, others said, we want to hear you again. So that's the second response. When you share the gospel, someone say, oh, that's interesting. I'd, I'd like to know more. I shared the gospel a couple of weeks ago with a friend. He got a bad back, prayed for his back, shared the gospel, and he didn't turn in belief, but I met him last week and, and carried on discipling. I'm going to meet him tomorrow and carry on discipling. He wants to know more. And so you just, yeah, okay, I'll come back. I'll come back and we'll share some more. And you start discipling them, opening the Bible with them. So you'll get some who will sneer, some that will say, maybe, can we hear some more? And then the third category that you're going to find is, it says, uh, but the few men became followers of Paul. There were those that believed. And in our story today, we see many heard the message and believed. You will get those who believe. You will do that. And what do you do with those that believe? What do you do with them? Someone turns and believes tomorrow. You're sharing the gospel. They turn and believe on Jesus. What are you going to do with them? You're going to bring them to Bob and Nick and say, here you go, off you go. No, you're not. You're going to start discipling them. You're going to meet with them. You're going to encourage them in following Jesus. And you're going to start week by week meeting them, talking to them, explaining what it means to follow Jesus. If you need help in that, I'm sure Bob and Nick can help you. But if we, you know, we, don't, we don't bring babies to the door of the church and leave them there and expect the church to look after them. We are the church. We are the church. And I want to say, that, oh sorry, there was a fourth category, I said it was four. The fourth one, which is not biblical and not in the Bible, but you will meet Christians. Okay, yes, I'm a believer. You know, and, uh, and so you will meet Christians as well. So, so those that will laugh at you and reject you, those that will say, can I hear more, those that will turn and believe, the fourth category is you'll meet a Christian. And what do you do with Christians? Well, what I would do is say, how do you share the faith? Can I train you? So you encourage it. We want more laborers. We want to get more people out into the harvest. And so those four. But I want to say, that here we see that they, 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 they healed this man. They shared the gospel. And it says in chapter 4, verse 4, many who heard the message believed. And the number of men grew to about 5,000. Wow. Now, at the end of uh, or chapter 2, it says about 3,000 were added to their number. At the end of chapter 2, it says, Lord added to them daily. Um, so there's a growing here. And then by the time we get to the end of chapter uh, 3, or this story, chapter 4, it's the 5,000. I, 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 wow, wouldn't that be amazing? I want to, to redefine what it means for fruitfulness for us. The gospel is fruitful. We see, we, we see here that the, 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 the church grew. People were being saved. Now, we are not seeing that at the moment here in the UK. I shared a, a case study with these guys, uh, North London, your patch. Um, uh, over, over lockdown, 18 months, uh, these guys were out on the streets sharing the gospel uh, and then training people to share and make disciples. Uh, they had 18 new disciples in that period, 18 months, launched 17, I think it was 17 new discipleship groups in that time, here, North London. Okay. But the key was they shared the gospel about three and a half thousand times. <laughs> okay. So, so you, you, you've got to be abundantly sowing the gospel to see. But I, I, I'm, a, I'm an accountant by trade, so I did the figures. It means they shared the gospel 50 times near enough to see one person turn and believe. Are you willing 
for 49 people to say, no, thank you. Are you willing for people to laugh at you 49 times to find that one person that God has prepared for you to lead to Jesus? Is it worth it? But I want to believe for even greater numbers. I believe that God has got something special coming for the UK. And will you join me in praying that we will see fruitfulness of the gospel that we've never seen before? That churches will have to be planted everywhere because we're just running out of room. I want us to expect fruitfulness. I want us to believe that when I share the gospel, people are going to start to follow Jesus. Why? Because the gospel is powerful. The gospel is the word of God. The gospel brings salvation. So there's a little bit of a pattern here. If you noticed it, there we go. We, 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 we go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go. And tomorrow morning, wherever you are, you're going. Okay? That's it. That's it. You're going. You're representing Jesus. You're his ambassador. Everyone you bump into tomorrow, you're Jesus to them. Listen, what's God saying? And we're going to take time. To listen to Jesus and say, is this the one? Is this the person? And maybe do a bit of fishing. How are you? And start to ask some questions. Ask some good questions. And then if we get an opportunity, we can offer prayer. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for healing? Can I pray for your situation? Can I pray for your family? Can I pray for your job? And then if they receive prayer, then we say, well, can I just share with you what it means to follow Jesus? And you share the gospel with them. And if they turn and believe, you're going to start to disciple them. This pattern here is exactly what Jesus did. Exactly what Jesus did. You start Mark chapter 1, and you see he went into a town, he healed the sick, he healed the sick, um, delivered those that are possessed with demons, he preached the gospel, and people gathered to him and started to follow him. That's what he did. And he trained uh, Peter and John. They saw Jesus and said, We're going to do the same. Well, we've got this opposite. Let's, let's, let's heal this man, let's preach the gospel, and the people believe and start to follow Jesus. And the, the, the process hasn't changed. This is what God has called us to do. This is what Jesus has called us to do. When he sent out uh, the 72, he says, go, heal the sick, preach the kingdom of God. That's what we do. Are you willing to follow in the ways of Jesus? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. We love his life, don't we? Who, who loves being in the life of Jesus? We love the truth, the, the, the truth that we read, the truth of Jesus. We love that. But so often we're a bit resistant to following his way. Yeah, I know that was all right for Jesus, but maybe not for me. But this is what Jesus did. It's exactly what he did. And his disciples followed the same route. And I want to encourage us that as we share the gospel, expect that Jesus is going to work. The Spirit is at work. And we will see people saved. And you'll be starting little discipleship groups everywhere. All over this area, the church will grow. Jesus will be glorified. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Let's pray. Let's just, uh, let's just wait a, a moment. Let's, um, I, I want to pray. If there's people here this morning uh, that are unwell, uh, in pain, uh, in any way, let's just pray for healing. Just, just, let's take this time just to pray that for the healing of God upon his people just now. So if that's you and you just, just uh, either put your hand on where it's hurting or just lift your hands to God, I'm just going to pray for you uh, that, that, that God will come and heal us today. Thank you, Jesus, that you are a wonderful saviour, a great God. And Lord, when you come, you save us from our sin, but you save us uh, from everything, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray now in the name of Jesus that those that are in pain, those uh, that are ill, uh, those that are struggling at the moment, in the name of Jesus, they, they will be healed and set free. Come now, Lord Jesus. Come now. Can I pray for those... I'm not sure if anyone is here uh, today, um, but if there are, or, or maybe watching this uh, online, uh, if you're not following Jesus, I want to pray just now that you will turn and believe on him. He came, he died, he, he took upon himself all of our guilt, all of our shame, all of our sin, so that we might be forgiven and set free. 
reconciled to God. Lord, I want to pray for those just now who, who will turn and believe on you. I pray now in the name of Jesus that they will believe in you. They will put their trust in you. Lord, they will turn from their sin and they will turn to you and start to follow your ways for their life. Lord Jesus, I want to pray for this church. Brothers and sisters, young and old, look, when we go, we go for you. We're on mission for you. We go knowing that you have appointed us to be ambassadors for you. Lord, I pray, Spirit, you will lead us and guide us. Go before us and go with us, Lord, to help us. Give us the words to say. Open up opportunities for you. And we pray, as we pray with people, as we share the gospel people, there will be wonderful stories, even next week, of people that have turned to believe and started to follow Jesus. Lord, we, we've got some statistics to say if we share the gospel 50 times, then one person will turn and believe. There's more than there maybe about 50 in this room. If everybody here shared the gospel this week, we would have one new believer next week. But Lord, we're looking for even more fruitfulness. Lord, we're looking for you to do amazing things that, that we will see uh, the move of God, the move of the Spirit in this place and in our nation, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, this nation needs you. They need you. And Lord, you've, uh, you've given us the mission. You've assigned us to tell them. How can they believe if they don't hear? So Lord, I pray, open our mouths that we will have the courage and boldness to speak about Jesus wherever we go. Thank you, Lord. Bless your church, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.